we ran a six-figure weed business out of my party house basement. Junior year of college, Bowling Green State University, me and three friends are getting ready to move into a party house together. Now, our buddy, we'll call him Sean for the story, he already lived in the party house, so he has us over for like a pre-move-in meeting. We wanted a plan for how we wanted to set up our party house, which rooms we were living in. Just get ready for that before we go home for the summer. My other two roommates, we'll call them Kenny and Drew, we're hanging out, talking with Sean, smoking. We were all stoners at the time, so you know we're just hanging out, smoking, kind of coming up with our game plan for senior year. At the end of our conversation, we're getting ready to leave. Sean tells us he's gotten a weed seed to germinate. He's all excited about it. I don't know anything about the growth process or how that shit works, so I didn't think anything of it. Drew and Kenny clearly didn't think anything of it, and we went home for the summer. Sean stayed in BG all summer. Really didn't hear from him. I think everyone kind of forgot he stayed there all summer. When we get back, we moved in about a month or two before the school year started. Just because senior year, you want to move into your house, get settled in. Sean has about 30 to 40 marijuana plants growing in our basement. We had one of those old school basements with the natural stone and the cement blocks as the foundation. So there's actual dirt from the ground in our basement. And Sean did all kinds of research in the summertime and created the perfect growing environment for marijuana. So he's got this bisqueen plastic all put up from top to bottom in the basement to keep the smell down. He's got his air filtration system, the grow lights, the whole nine yards. He's got it ready to go. And Sean has always been kind of our wild card, crazy genius type of friend, like one of the smartest dudes I've ever met, but nobody realizes how intelligent he is. The dude has this system down. For those of you who don't know about marijuana plants, it takes about four to eight months for them to grow and bud and flower before you pick them. Sean had the system down to about one to two months. So he's got these things growing on steroids. Not only does he have all of them growing, he's got a whole storage room worth of them up in our crawl space attic that he's got all sealed and bagged and ready to go. And we are freaking out. We're like, dude, this is a class A felony. What are you doing? And he's like, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to sell it. A little nervous at first, but we were up there a month or two before the school year even started. Now, obviously, you know how popular it is on college campuses. So we're thinking, this is a massive business opportunity. Can we capitalize? The four of us kind of had the conversation, like, if we do this, we have to do this perfectly. Like, we have to perfect the system we have here because this is some serious criminal activity. So we started experimenting, kind of telling people, like, we have a plug for some really good shit if you want it. Giving out samplers at different parties over the summer. Started small in our friend group, then to our fraternity. Once we kind of started to get a client list, I was kind of like our outside sales rep telling people about it because I had friends in pretty much every fraternity and social group. By the time you get to senior year, you pretty much know everybody on campus. I'm telling all the fraternities and sports teams and different clubs and shit like, hey, we got a guy, you got to try this shit. Drew bought a burner phone once a week, and that was a number that everyone had to contact. So we didn't have to contact anyone through our own personal numbers or Snapchats or anything like that. The most genius part of the whole thing was our delivery system. We picked up a paper route in BG, highlight the addresses who was getting weed from us. We had our whole address of people and we would deliver weed once a week to everyone who needed it. And it was a flawless system because you'd run up, toss it in the mailbox, grab the cash that they put there for you, boom you're out. It was a genius system and we were making money out the ass. The craziest part about it is we're supplying basically all of BG with our weed, okay? We're not even halfway through the school year and we've got so much left over. Like we had weed coming out of our ears because of how quick Sean's growing this shit. We start getting contacted by old friends who have already graduated like alumni of BG who live in Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland. We're distributing to them. So they're coming and picking it up. They're taking it all over the state of Ohio. So we are supplying, we called it 219 screen. <laughs> We're supplying our strand all over, all over the state of Ohio, making bank doing it. I mean, it was insane. We never told anyone about it because we were like, as far as I know, we're just the middleman. We're picking it up from someone. They don't need to know where it's coming from or how we're making it. We're just going to roll with it. By Christmas break, we have a six-figure business with no way to hide the income, right? Like, we're just splitting it up between the four of us. Drew was our bookie, like I said, keeping the numbers for us. It was it was insane. This was before it's legal in Michigan. We're halfway through senior year and we're just living, literally living the dream. And we started washing money through one of the local restaurants who got a lot of tips in cash. No one tracks cash tips to a certain degree. So any, every money we made at the end of the week, Sean and I worked at this little restaurant. The guys would drive it up, deliver the tip money, and we would just 
wash it that way and give it right back to ourselves. So it was one of the craziest things we'd ever done, but we had the execution down to a T. Everything from the paper route to when people would pick it up. We were so well known for what we were doing that I wrapped green Christmas lights around this old antenna on our house because we lived on Enterprise Street. So you could see our house all the way from far side of BG's campus. And I would turn the green lights on. 219 is green. That was your go to order. They'd order through our burner phone. We'd deliver it the next day on our paper wrap. The most adrenaline filled, legendary, but nerve wracking things we ever experienced because during that time, our party house gets put on probation for one of our parties that we're having. So we've got this fucking six figure weed business that we're running from the underground <laughs> while being investigated by the university. So we are sweating bullets. We're like three quarters of the way through our senior year, and then COVID happens. When they shut down school, business sped up even more. So we just kept selling, selling, selling until it hit a point where we we're like, okay, we have a ton of shit left. We got to eventually move out. Our lease is coming to an end. We got the new guys moving in. This isn't something that you can just hand over the keys to. Like, we need to wrap this shit up. Sean stops growing, takes everything that we have and kind of says, okay, this is how much it's worth. Can we sell it to somebody? And we're like, can, can you sell this in bulk to a dispensary? Like, should we just sell it? It was so out. Again, it was just, I can't even describe the size of the business we're doing. You know, like I said, we got people coming in from Columbus, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and they're distributing it for us. You know, 219's green is all over the state of Ohio. We're running the Midwest. You know, we started talking to some people really, because we're deep down a rabbit hole here. I mean, it was a massive, we're talking six-figure business. You know, we're paying off our student loans, house rent, car payments, everything just with straight cold cash. But again, we had a flawless system for it, and we were confident in it. We just didn't know, like, okay, how do you, how do we end this? Because we're all seniors. We're going to be graduating. We're in the middle of covid like, how, how are we going to wrap all this up? Ended up meeting a kid, an Italian kid that I knew, got a lot of family in Chicago. They got some connections. So we decide we're going to take a guy's trip to Chicago and meet up with some sketchy ass dudes, see if we can just sell all this shit and get it over with. So we disguised the trip. Our fraternity's having this regional leadership conference in Chicago. We kind of disguise our big business endeavor by saying, hey, can we just tag along for this Chicago trip? with you guys they said they were cool with it or whatever we're driving up there and we're nervous you know this is a huge opportunity for us but you don't know what kind of danger you're getting into because now you're talking like high powerful people up in places that you don't want to be in you know we're, we're trying to get out of the game that's where you get into the nerve-wracking part of it is like you don't know if you're interfering with their business because you know illinois is not that far from ohio you don't know how far your shit's getting when you're just selling in bulk to a massive amount of people so we were really nervous driving up to chicago like this this is dangerous shit. Like, we're in the upper echelons of the marijuana business on the illegal side. Didn't really know what was going to go down. So we're driving up to meet this guy. They gave us a location. And I ain't going to lie, we all brought guns and shit. Like, we, we were ready to put up a fight if need be. You're nervous as hell. And you also don't know, like, are we meeting up with an undercover cop? We had run through scenario after scenario. We took my car. Once we got into the city of Chicago, we switched my license plate. Like, we were deep in this shit. And it was nerve-wracking as hell. I'm not going to lie. It felt like you know, 10 days felt like 10 years type of shit. We pull up to this place in Chicago. It's literally a little restaurant, like a little bar and grill in the subway of Chicago. Granted, we got to meet in the daytime, but this is nerve wracking shit for us as college kids. I remember we go in and sit down in the meeting and Sean's kind of talking to the guy about the product and what he's been doing, growing it and talking to us and kind of how we ran things at the team. And, you know, we were pretty open in explaining our operation because, you know, you really want to explain like, hey, we are some college kids. We got really lucky. This was a great run for us, but we're ready to shut it down. We're not a threat to you. I'm a big talker, and I'm probably come across a little arrogant at times because I can just never shut my fucking mouth. And I was remember being nervous as hell in this meeting, and the guy looks at me real serious across the table, and he's like, this is one of your movie scripts, isn't it? And I said, you got me. This is the plot for one of my movie scripts. <laughs> so I feel like I told that pretty well. Hopefully, hopefully I got a couple people, but... uh but, you know, that's that's just that's why I'm trying to get these scripts produced, man. It's all based off real characters and real events. Maybe that one's real. Maybe it's not. Who knows the extent of that? I'll leave it at that. You guys don't get to find that out till we get to start making some of these scripts. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite scripts that I've written so far. Had to uh, outline that for you guys here and see what you thought of it. And, and yeah, that's today's episode. Hope I got a couple people. I really enjoy doing the script stories here and there. So I hope I got a couple people. Hope everybody's well. And. And yeah, we'll be back with more stories. Hope everyone's good. Talk to Tom.
was right around town thinking to myself, is it gonna get easier? I'll be up in a way of the street and big, but I can't even breathe no more. What's it to me? What can I see? Taking shots by the lake till I can't even breathe. Literally bought a burner phone. Mic check, mic check. Mic check and and we're good.